I'm 29, and I live along the Appalachian Range in Lower West Virginia. I've been going backpacking and camping for years, exploring different trails all around the nearby mountains. My best friend, who lived just a few miles from me, would often join me on these hikes. We usually planned one big trail every year in the fall, being anywhere from a few days to a whole week of backpacking and camping. In 2019, we planned to take a trail across the range to a small lake at the top of the mountains. In the days leading up to the trip though, my friend had to call it off because of an emergency at his work. I'd already taken the whole week off of work and had everything ready to go, so I decided to just go alone. On Monday morning, I drove to a nearby trailhead, then started my route. This wasn't a regular recreational trail like you'd typically see on a four-hour hike. These backpacking trails didn't have defined paths, so you have to use maps, compasses, and landmarks to navigate where you're going. Typically, there's a large landmark in the distance, like a specific rock formation that you hike toward, and when you get there, you can see your next landmark, and so on. I spent the first two days hiking toward a ridge in the mountains. When it got dark on the second day, I set up camp several hours from reaching the ridge. I pitched the tent and got a fire going, then heated up some of the food I brought in my bag. The sun had already set, and it was around 8 o'clock when I laid in my tent to rest and read. I left the fire going, planning to put it out before actually sleeping. 20 minutes into reading, and through the fire crackling outside, I heard the strong sound of a stick snapping right behind my tent. I jolted up. My first thought was a black bear, possibly having smelled the food I cooked earlier. I didn't hear anything else though. I crawled out of the tent and shined a flashlight into the tree line behind my tent. Nothing. I called out aggressively to scare away any predators, but again, there were no sounds of anything running away. It was really strange because the stick snapping was very distinct, definitely being from something stepping on it. I stayed outside the tent for a while, looking around constantly before putting out the fire and going inside. I found it really hard to sleep that night because I was so focused on listening for more sounds. In the morning, I was almost surprised to have even slept through the night. I packed my tent and everything else at the campsite, then continued along until I reached the ridge. From there, it was a straight shot to the lake. I was moving fast, trying to get there before dark so I wouldn't have to move my campsite again the next day. I arrived with about an hour to spare before sunset. The lake was beautiful, very much worth the hike. I walked around it, enjoying the scenery, then pitched the tent and set up my camp on the tree line beside the lake. As I sat by the fire, I kept turning around, hearing soft noises somewhere between the trees behind me. I figured I was just being paranoid, but it was really creepy. It almost sounded exactly like footsteps, but I knew nobody would be out here. I would have seen their tent when I walked around the lake. It was too dark at this point to see anything further than a few feet, so looking around wasn't an option anymore. An hour later, I got in my tent and laid down. Every few minutes, I would hear footsteps again. They were barely too quiet for me to tell for sure what they were though. Eventually, I got so tired that I fell asleep. And what I think was only an hour after I fell asleep, I woke up to the sound of someone running away from my tent. I jolted up and grabbed my flashlight, rushing out of the tent and looking in the direction of the footsteps. I saw the bare back of them running away in the distance. My heart was beating rapidly. I looked down and saw footprints all around my tent like they had been walking around me and searching the campsite. 
I tried to get the campfire going again as fast as I could so I could see better. I was terrified. I had nowhere to go and nobody to help me. I sat at the fire all night, keeping my head on a swivel, but I never saw or heard anything else. In the morning, I snapped a few pictures of the lake, then started the hike back. I had planned to stay for a whole day. I wasn't comfortable anymore, feeling like I was being followed. I was able to make it back without any more trouble, thankfully. But along my journey, I began noticing several things missing from my backpack. Small things like food, a few tools, etc. But I always had my bag with me. Even today, I wonder if whoever had been outside my tent that one night had actually snuck inside and stole from my bag while I was asleep. Even the thought of it makes my whole body shiver. I've always loved camping, especially in the fall when the leaves are changing colors and the air is crisp. So when my best friend, who I'll call Katie, asked me to go camping with her for her birthday, I jumped at the chance. We packed up our gear and headed out to a secluded spot in the woods that Katie's family had been camping at for years. As we hiked in, I felt a sense of silence. In a good way though, it was like we were the only two people in the world. The hike was relatively short, and when we arrived at the campsite, we both started working on setting everything up. This only took a portion of the hour, and after we finished, we decided to go for a hike. We went pretty much straight north, off the beaten path, just exploring, until we came across a faded trail. Katie had never seen it before and said there was nothing out here, so she was confused. We followed the trail that wound through the woods and eventually led us to what looked like an old abandoned cabin. It was small and weather-beaten, with broken windows and a sagging roof. Katie was eager to explore it, and I was a bit hesitant, but also really curious. We stepped inside. It was clear that no one had been there for years. We poked around for a while, looking for any interesting artifacts or clues about who had lived there, but we didn't find anything. As we were about to leave, I noticed something strange. There was a door in the corner of the cabin that I hadn't noticed before. It was very small and had a padlock on it. I pointed it out to Katie and we both became curious. The lock looked really old, completely rusted all over. I knocked on the door, knowing nobody would be inside, but I just wanted to make sure. Katie went outside and grabbed a large rock, handing it to me. I smashed it against the lock, only taking a few good hits until it broke open. The door dragged against the ground as we pulled it back. Inside, it was pitch black and we couldn't see anything. Katie pointed her flashlight through the doorway and there was a staircase leading down. We both were creeped out now, but we assured ourselves that nobody has been here for years and there really wasn't anything realistic to fear. I led the way down the steep staircase it wasn't very long, only 8 to 10 steps, before it opened into a room. What we saw was very disturbing and strange. There were several small mattresses on the ground, along with some other random furniture. They looked very modern though, like the mattresses had to be within 5 years old. Something about it just hit me with fear and both of us rushed upstairs. We pushed the door shut again and stood there, unsure of what we just saw. We debated whether or not it was a crime scene of some sort, because it all just looked so out of place. As I was talking, Katie suddenly shushed me. In the distance, footsteps were coming toward the cabin. 
They came all the way up to it, but oddly, they walked right past it without stopping. I could see confusion on Katie's face too. As soon as they were far away, we ran back to our campsite, then right back to Katie's place. We called the police, just in case it was something. To us, the fact that the person kept walking without even stopping meant that they were familiar with the cabin. We didn't know if it was due to something bad or not, so we decided to let the police decide. They searched the cabin and the area around it, but ultimately found nothing leading to anything. They said it was really strange, and even seemed like it had to be something bad, but there just wasn't anything justifying that. It ended up becoming a big thing in our town for a while, having the community talk about every possibility and theory of what the cabin was used for. The city even had the cabin torn down because they didn't want people visiting it. It still has never been figured out, and it probably never will, but there's just something in me that knows. Something awful happened there. Every year as a kid, my family would go on these big camping trips. I was always really excited because we lived in Arizona, where there's pretty much nothing, and we'd camp in Washington. Seeing trees and grass was my favorite part, but I also got to see all my cousins, and even though we only saw each other a couple times a year, we were really close. My favorite cousin, who was more like a brother to me, was Luis. He was a year older than me, and we were inseparable when together. Because of what happened, we became even closer after that camping trip. I think it took us both a while to understand what really went on and what more could have happened to us. It started when we had been there for two days already. Most of our family was either in the lake or by the campfire talking. Luis didn't like to swim, so we decided to play in the woods instead. We played a version of Tag called Bandit. We'd switch off being the cop and chase the other one, who was the bandit, until we'd catch them. We would play for hours, but in the woods, it's easy to just keep running and not know where you're going. We tried our best to stay within viewing distance, but when Luis started chasing me with a huge stick, I guess my adrenaline kicked into hyperspeed. I don't know how long I ran for, but eventually, I ended up at an old looking trailer. Luis wasn't far behind, but I remember him throwing the stick down, his focus now on what we both assumed was an abandoned trailer. We discussed investigating it further, and I'm not really sure why, but we decided not to. We started walking back, but we didn't really know where we were going. Probably about 10 minutes into our walk, we saw a couple coming towards us, pushing a shopping cart full of stuff. The woman approaches us and is really nice, while the man stayed back. She asked if we were lost, who we were with, our names and ages, and I remember when we told her how old we were, she looked back at the guy and then to us again. She told us we don't have to be scared, and she'll help us find our way home after they drop off their stuff at their campsite. She said we could also make s'mores if we wanted. Luis and I were hesitant but she seemed really nice, and it was still daytime, so for some reason that made everything way less suspicious. In my seven-year-old brain, bad people only do things at night, so we were fine. We walked with them for a while, following them back to their camp. While her and Luis were talking, I glanced over at the shopping cart. It was filled with a bunch of rusty metal things, and what looked like to be nothing new Nothing was in bags. Everything just looked like trash they'd found somewhere. I started to get really uncomfortable, and I could tell Luis was too. Every time I'd look over at the guy, he was never smiling, and sometimes he'd be staring at me with a blank stare. This was 18 years ago, and I still remember how creepy he looked. We walked a bit further, until the trailer came back into view, 
and the woman grabbed Luis and mine's hand and asked if we were excited for s'mores. Suddenly, I heard Luis's name being called, and then mine. We all stopped for a second, and the lady squeezed my hand a bit tighter. She asked something to the guy along the lines of what they should do. He responded, but I don't remember what he said. The lady started to turn us toward the trailer while holding us tighter and tighter. She started to speed up as well into sort of a fast walk. I looked back and saw my sister through the trees. Without hesitation, I yelled her name and the lady immediately let go of my hand. Luis and I ran to her as she made her way towards us. My sister yelled to the others that she'd found us. My mom and dad thanked the couple who had told them this elaborate story on how they've been trying to find our parents for a while now and that we're such sweet boys and everything. I remember my parents inviting the couple over for burgers, but thankfully they declined. I think because the lady was so nice and that we were found safe that my parents didn't think twice. I do recall my dad and uncle talking about how creepy the guy was though. My cousin and I ended up telling my sister who found us that the couple was weird, but I don't think she understood what we meant. It wasn't until my cousin and I were old enough to understand that some people have really bad intentions. We talked about it again in depth, and we both came to the conclusion that by the looks of it, they were tight on money and were probably going to sell us or something. For years growing up, I had kept this from my parents because I was supposed to be the strong man of the family, and thinking about that time made me feel gross and preyed upon. Luis also felt embarrassed, as he was older than me and felt he had failed to protect me. We eventually told our parents a few years ago, but I wish we had told them immediately, and maybe something could have been done. Nowadays, I never let my kids out of my sight and always let them know that they can tell me anything without fear of being judged, especially my son.